guess I better turn it on. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to start with the verse, Psalm 41 to 3. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. How's everybody today? Good. Our first time back in January because we missed uh, out on our first week in the snowstorm. Um, just want to say nice to see Billy here after his accident this week. Good to see you around. We uh, had uh, an idea for this week that we were going to talk about a new start. So this is January, the new year, 2015. But, uh, our whole service is about a new start, new changes in our lives. And so we've asked a number of people to sing for us today. And the songs that they've chosen are about uh, changes that God makes inside of us and the start, new start that we have in life with Him. But through the flow of the service today, there isn't going to be a service, I guess there's going to be a communion, we'll call it that, a long communion. <laughs> so, um, first of all, we are going to start with everyone singing Change My Heart, O oh Lord. So if you want to, oh God, so if you want to stand with us, we appreciate that. <laughs> Me beforehand, he encouraged me, which was nice. And then after the 
the song was done, and after church was done, the bird had come up to me and said, will you join the choir? <laughs> so, I said, yes. <laughs> so now I've been in the choir for all that time. But this song is special to me because it does, it's, although it's sung years ago, what it does today, and applies for today, is that in the, in the song there are words like, thorns of violence, thorns of hate are growing wildly. And they still are growing wildly. But his blood, where it landed when he died on the cross, love grew, he did it for us, he did it for us then, 2,000 years ago, and he's still doing it for us today. So, I hope you enjoy the song, it's one of my favorites. Where my Savior bled. 
if you notice us looking this way a little bit, it's, we don't have a screen, so we have our words, and they might be a little different. So. We're just improvising. So Andy's up next. He's going to tell us what this song means to him. read a, a couple of scriptures before we get going here. If I can find them. Uh, this is uh, Matthew 27.
to me because it comes from the Psalms. And just as a worshiper and a worship leader, the Psalms are my go-to. It, they speak to me because I think David is a man who recognizes how, how much he needs the Lord and how much he depends on him for every, everything in his life, every bit of sustenance, every act of leading, every bit of courage that he would need. Um, that really speaks to me because I need the Lord for everything, <laughs> for every bit of sustenance, every provision. Um, the words in this one um, are really special because they just say simple words. For example, he says, um, David says, when I called, you answered me. That's the kind of God that we have, a God who listens for us and who will respond to us. When we cry out for him, he's there. And he's there to save us from ourselves. And he holds us in his hand. So I can't um, claim credit for the lyrics of this song. <laughs> I can't claim credit for the arrangement of this song. This one was arranged by the very first worship leader who I ever served under when I first became saved. Um, her name was Jana Goulet Jones. Um, but the passion, the sentiment of it, is is all mine. And I hope you, um, I hope you hear a bit of my heart in it. Um, and I, I know that it'll speak to you because if you're chasing after God like David was, then you'll recognize His hand that you're firmly in His hand.
years um, that God has given us so many years ago, put it to music now, and it's just as relevant now as it was all those years ago. And it's it's uh, given directly to us from God. It's awesome. So we are going to have offering if the kids can come forward for offering, and the little ones can go down to Junior Church. Let us pray. Lord God, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to be in your presence. Father God, you are great and amazing and so worthy of praise. Father, we want to we wanna honor you this morning and the rest of this day and each and every day as we uh, walk through our time on this earth. Lord God, uh, I would ask that uh, you would forgive us and uh, of the things that are unpleasing to you and that you would make us mindful of things that we, we don't even know, Lord, that are unpleasing to you. Um, reveal those things in our heart, Lord, that, uh, that we need to work on. Father God, uh, um, I thank you for this group of people here this morning, for this church family, um, for the support that we can be to one another. Um, and I thank you that uh, you uplift that, that, that we are the bride of Christ and that uh, um, you strengthen us, Lord God. You give us hope. Uh, you give us a purpose and a reason um, for being, for existing uh, on this earth. And Lord God, you are uh, an amazing provider. And uh, we thank you for that, Lord God. <coughs> Father, we, uh, we want to lift up to you those people in the congregation that, uh, uh, that Diane mentioned earlier, Diane mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, we, we pray that your comfort, your peace, your healing hand would be in all those situations. Lord God, for uh, those in, uh, in and around us who are feeling sorrow, who are feeling alienated, who are alone, who are sick and uh, in pain. Father, we ask that you would breathe into those situations, that your healing hand would be there, that uh, your comfort and peace would be in those situations as well. Father God, lead us into this new year. We thank you for bringing us to this point, and uh, we look forward to 2015 and ask that uh, what we do in the coming year would be through your guidance. Lord, make us uh, uh, ever mindful to, to seek your will and your guidance in all that we do in the next year. Um, I pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. <coughs>
12 or 14 years. It's not a new song of hers. And <clears throat> it's just a good song.
raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. I'm going to ask you all to stand, and we're going to soon take my life and let it be in preparation for our communion. <laughs> She's scared of bed. She's scared of 
Whatever happens between the time I walk out the door and then I walk back in 30 seconds later, she's scared. And so, um, you know, we, we deal with that. Anyways, recently, uh, just after coming back from Christmas, uh, Charlotte had a cold. And uh, you know anybody that's had young children, you know what that's like at bedtime. They're sick, they're stuffed up, their nose is running, they're coughing, and, and you've got mums, they're running in there every couple minutes to make sure they're still breathing. Um, they're propping them up on pillows and the kids are sliding off. And so we made the decision that night that it was just easier if Charlotte just slept in our bed and I'll sleep in Charlotte's room. <clears throat> so that's, that's what we did. So I went to crawl into bed, I don't know, 10 o'clock, 10.30, whatever it was, uh, and uh, I look at her bed, and there's just this stuff all on her bed. I'm like, okay, you know, she's got a few of her most prized possessions uh, in her bed with her. So I start to pull the stuff out of the bed. Turns out she had all of her dolls, 30 or 40 of them, I guess, that she's amassed. And they were in various stages of undress. I don't know why. They had to be that way. Um, she had all of the pillows in the house that she could, you know, get her hands on. And they were all built up around her with a very small area that she obviously slept in. And then, not only that, she had every stuffed animal that she owned stuffed between the bed and the wall down in, in around. And so I, I just kept pulling it out of the bed. It was like a clown car. I just kept pulling it and pulling it. And this, this pile began to, to build up on the floor. And it, it has the size of this table, no, no word of lie. It was, it, was, it was that big. And I just was like, oh, my goodness. So finally I got out of all that and I crawled into her bed and I took all of her little children's blankets and I laid them over me in a patchwork to make sure that I was covered. And I, and I said, okay, now I can go to sleep. And then it just sort of hit me. You know, she's doing all that because she's scared, right? She, she's scared, and so she's, she's pulling this stuff around her to try to make herself feel more secure. And, and really, none of it matters. None of it's going to do anything for her. I mean, I tell her, you know, Daddy's here. Daddy's just out in the other room watching TV. Or, you know, relax. Daddy's here. Daddy's, you know, you're safe. But no, she still pulls that stuff around her. It's in her mind, right? She's got this logic that says, the more of that stuff she has, the better safe she is. So I was chuckling to myself, and then in that moment, it just dawned on me. Really, I'm no different than Charlotte. And really, each one of us, in some way, are no different than Charlotte. We're all like her. We all are scared of something. We're all scared of maybe troubles in relationships that we're having, maybe troubles with work, maybe addictions, maybe whatever it is. Insert the word there. And so we start to pull stuff into our lives in our wisdom and in our logic that we think is going to make us safer. We think is going to ward off that scared feeling. And really it doesn't. It doesn't do any good. It doesn't matter how many stuffed animals are down between the wall and the bed. Charlotte's no safer. It doesn't matter how much stuff we have piled up at home. That scared feeling is not going to go away. And that's where God steps in. That's where God says, you know what, I've got this. You know, as Sarah was singing and the other songs that were sung this morning worked out perfectly. Um, God's got this. Our logic, our wisdom means nothing. The third Proverbs is, is they're 27, 28 verses long, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But the whole thing is, is just full of references to the fact that our wisdom, our logic, what we do, what we know, matters not. Because God, and leaning on God, trusting on God, is what it's all about. And that is what will ward off that scary feeling. The, uh, I could read the whole thing, but uh, obviously will not. But the fifth and sixth verses is, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. We're coming into a new year. We're into a new year. My prayer this morning as we come around this table and as we go out today, as we go into this new year, as we embrace the freshness of the new year, is that we can continue or increase even just a little bit every day, trusting on God, relying on God and His wisdom, His logic, and not ours. I'll give Mark to give thanks for the couple of Father God, we do thank you this morning for these words and, and uh, to be reminded of the new year. 
and the fact that you do love us and that you care about us. And Father, I just pray that you would be with us this morning as we remember what Jesus did on the cross for us, as we remember that he gave his body and his blood so that we could have true life with you. And so, Father, I pray your blessing upon the loaf and the cup as we partake together in Christ's name. Amen. So, um, I'm going to try a solo, which is unusual for me, but I'm going to give it a try today. Um, this is a song that I've been hearing on the message for the last year. It's uh, Danny Gokey. I don't know if anybody knows him, but he's a fairly new singer who um, lost his wife um, just before he tried out for American Idol. And so I, I watched him. That was back when I was watching American Idol, so I watched him on stage, and he um, he told about his faith in God and how God uh, got him through the hard times. So this song is called Hope in Front of Me. It's about um, all the difficulties that we have in life. Um, uh, everyone knows what I do for work, and so every day I hear um, about the struggles that people are going through. And, um, and there's always, in our community, there's always people that we're concerned about or worried about or in our families. And so this talks about um, some of those rainy days, some of the more difficult and trying days, and how we need to focus on the light, focus on our faith in, in Jesus, and how he can get us through those storms, and that we always have hope. Our hope is always in God, hope is in Jesus, that there will be better, there's always something better ahead of us in heaven waiting for us there. So, I'll give it a try.